Today I'm going to show you how to make this adorable poncho in two different styles. So I have a black and white and a gray one that I made and then also this one. And on each of these I made a different collar. So you have a choice of making a turtleneck collar or a two inch wide collar or a one inch wide collar. So this one is the one inch and the black and white and gray one is the turtleneck obviously. And I do have another one right here that I'll show you. I haven't finished that one yet, but that one is the two inch collar. So as you see here, you have a lot of options, which is so wonderful. The yarns that I'm gonna be using today are the Premier Serenity Chunky Yarns, and they're a size five weight. With those same yarns, I also made this blanket right here. This is a checkerboard blanket that I made last year, and it's the same exact yarn that I used in that video. And if you've already made the blanket, I thank you so much because I've gotten quite a few pictures. Here's a few that I want to show you. And they are just so lovely. And I've given away that pattern at least a hundred times. So if you need that pattern in a written form, just let me know. I'd be happy to email it to you. And you can email me at sparkly160 at gmail.com to get that pattern. If you need a copy of the written pattern for this poncho, then I will also give that to you. So I just wanted to share that I'm about a size eight in the US size. If you're smaller than a size eight, I think this would still fit you really nicely. When you're starting the pattern and you need a bigger size, this turtleneck right here leads into the whole entire pattern. So it's worked from the top down. Now, when you're doing this pattern um, exactly how I showed you, when you if you don't block it it's kind of snug around the neck and i'll show you that here in a picture and if you block it like i show you then it's going to stretch out a little bit it's going to be a little bigger a little more loose and comfortable so you definitely need to block this and it turns out really soft and nice and i think you're really going to like it so let me go ahead and put this on because i want you to see how easy it is to put on so since it's a turtleneck of course you know you have to stretch it out and put it over your head and <laughs> wait, the back is stuck. Do you see that? <laughs> okay, let me get that out. Okay, there we go. So let me just show you what this looks like. And as you can see on the arms, I do have a shirt underneath, but it goes right to where those, the sleeves are. So if you want a bigger size, you definitely have to keep continuing with your pattern. I'm 5'3", and so as you can see, it hits me just like right, I don't know if you can see this, um, right above the knee, so right there. So if you need it to be longer because you're taller, then like I said, just keep going. And the color combinations are endless. You're gonna love this. It's so quick and easy to make, and it's super comfortable. And of course, you get to choose the collar that you want, so you have the option of the turtleneck, the one inch collar and the two inch collar. Of course, you can make it any size that you want. It doesn't really matter. But I just wanna let you know that it's very versatile and you can make it exactly like you like it. The fall season is here and this is so perfect to make right now. These would make great gifts as well for Christmas. I used somewhere between six to 800 yards per poncho. So just make sure you have enough yarn and I think you're gonna be good to go. The needles that I'm gonna be using for my project, I wanted to show you here because they're so long. And I bought two sets in the last two years and I really liked both of them. Um, this one is called Love to Knit and you can buy these, like I said, on Amazon and I'll link both of these in the description box. Now, both of them come with long cables and short cables, but they come with connectors. And as you can see here, I've put together a long, long needle. The metal one right here is 47 inches long and this one is 33 inches long. Now, when you are getting to the end of this pattern, you're gonna definitely need that 47 inch needle or the even longer if you have it, if you're gonna go bigger. So if you wanna purchase these, I'm gonna put a link in the description box. Knit Picks has a more expensive set. It's about $60, but it honestly, to get the nice one in the beginning would probably be the wisest thing to do so you're not actually buying more inexpensive ones that don't work as well. But on, these are fine. If you're a beginner and you're just kind of figuring out this knitting thing and you want something that can get you through a project and then you kind of see if you like knitting or not, 
then I would suggest doing these because that's what I did. But now I love knitting so much and I feel like that's going to be on my Christmas list to get a really expensive pair of needles, not expensive, but a higher end needle. And um, that is what I want for Christmas because I really, really am enjoying knitting so much. Let's move on to the tutorial and I'll give you all the details. I wanted to show that you have many options as far as your collar is concerned. So this is the turtleneck and what we're going to do with this one is we're going to fold it down like you see here in the photo that I'm wearing it. Or what you could do is you could do it say a two inch uh, the same as the turtleneck but you can just do a two inch collar and I think that's really cute. And then if you don't really want a collar and you just want like a band then you can do which I did here. This is a one by one rib knit and this is how it will look as far as the edge. So you have a couple different options here and this piece from here to here. So it's about a six and a half inch collar and you fold that in half which would make it three and a quarter inches. So you can do it any size you want around your neck which I think is such a great thing. So I wanted to give you those options because I know that not everyone likes wearing it a turtleneck. And again, I'm just going to show you this. So this one is a two inch. And then this one is the basically no collar. And this is about one inch before you start the, the increases. Okay. So that is three rows three rows of the one by one rib and then this one is how many rows did I do here one two three four five six and this one's six rows so I'm just going to continue with the one that is a no collar because you know what the one with the collar looks like with the turtleneck so I'm going to put that one aside and I'm going to bring this one in Okay, so here is the yarn I'm using. This is Serenity Chunky. This is in the color Cloud Dancer. This is a size 11. I don't know if that's a US or not. I'm assuming it is. And it fits into the nine millimeter space. And so does this other set of needles that I'm gonna be using. So they're both the same size. And I will need uh, two sets to bind off at the bottom of the poncho. Okay, to start off the pattern, I'm going to use a smaller cable. It's about 63 centimeters long, or if you flip that over, it's about 24 and a half to 25 inches long. So I'm going to start out with that for my turtleneck. As I finish the turtleneck, I'm going to switch over to the longer cable. And then once I get further down in the pattern, I'm going to switch over to an even longer cable. So that's how this is going to work. I am going to cast on 56 stitches, but if you want more, then you have to cast on four more stitches at a time. So it's a multiple of four. So if you want it to be, I would say if you're a larger size than a size eight, I would probably go to 60 and then maybe for the next size up, go to 64. 68 depending on uh, the size that you want or if you want a looser fitting poncho mine is kind of like it's not tight but it's also not loose so that will probably add a couple of inches if you add say eight stitches so just use your discretion I'm not exactly sure because I'm I've only been knitting for two and two and a half years and so I don't know as much as I'd like to but I think that no matter what size you make you're going to love it. You can always give it as a gift if it's too small. And I'm, I'm sure that whoever gets that is going to love it. I'm going to guesstimate how much yarn this will take to make my 56 stitches. I'll go ahead and start wrapping till I get 56 stitches. 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56. So I have 56 wrapped up right there. So I'm just going to take this off and then I'm going to start with my long tail cast on at this point. So all you're going to do is make a slip knot and you can use your favorite, you can use your favorite way of casting on, but I am going to be using it, the long tail. 
So I'm just going to wrap it around my fingers like this. So I'm going to take it in between these two pieces of yarn. I'm going to spread that apart and go under where the thumb is and over where my finger is. And just tighten that up a little bit. Don't make it too tight because we don't want them to get really snug, especially once they get down here on this cable. It gets a little bit smaller. So just keep them kind of loose, but not too loose. Okay, and then just go ahead and put on 56 stitches, or if you're making this bigger, you can do 60 or 64 or 68 or 72, but I'm not sure exactly how big that will be because I have not made one that big. So, you know, hopefully it will work out nice for you. So let's go ahead and cast on the amount that we need. Okay, so I have 56 stitches. I have quite a bit of yarn left over, but you know what? Honestly, you could just cut that a little piece off of here maybe half of it because if you're gonna put your stitches on and you're gonna come up short you're not gonna be very happy with that <laughs> so I think it's better to err on the side of caution and make that a little longer in the beginning go ahead and make sure you have the amount of stitches that you need and then we'll go ahead and get started Just make sure that it's not twisted so this ridge right here is on the inside you're gonna take a stitch marker and put that on your needle and you're going to take this first stitch and you're going to knit it with both strands. Now you can do this any way that's comfortable for you to join, but this works really nice for me. So you just have to remember that those two will be knitted together, not individually. Okay. And then on this next one, you're just going to do another knit. You're going to drop your tail and just use the working yarn. So that's what you're going to do from now on. Okay, so I'm pulling this down a little bit and then I have to switch over because I'm going to purl. So I purl and bring the yarn to the front. I'm going to go in the front stitch, yarn over, wrap it around, push it to the back and push it off. That's a purl. Again, yarn in the front, slip through the front stitch, yarn over, push to the back, slide off. Then you're going to knit two, so you're going to put it to the back, knit through the front, yarn over, wrap it around, slide it off. You're going to do two of those, yarn over, push it through, slide it off. Then you're going to switch back to a purl that's in the front. You're going to do two that way, and you're going to continue this all the way around, knit two, purl two, until you get to this last stitch. And all you're going to do, you're going to be finishing on a purl stitch if you did this correctly, because we want to make sure that if we joined with a knit, that we end with the purl. So that's why you need the multiples of four. So if, that, if it didn't work out for you, that's where you made the mistake. So anyway, what you're going to do is you're going to move this back to the back because we're going to start knitting. So this is our stitch marker. So you're just going to slip that over here and then just start knitting, but you have to knit these two stitches together. So don't forget that because that's where we started. So knit those two together. And then from now on, it will always be one. So you just have to tighten down your stitches a little bit, but it won't have a gap here. So that's why I really like that method. So just go ahead and continue your knit two, purl two all the way around. And then once this measures about seven inches in, in width, then I'm going to come back and I'll show you how to continue. Okay, so I have 56 stitches on this other needle, and this is number two. This is the second way that you can make this poncho without the turtleneck. So this method right here is without the turtleneck. And so you're going to do the same amount of stitches. You're going to cast on the same exact way as I showed you with the pink needles. Okay, go ahead and put on your stitch marker. And you might need a bigger one. You can use a piece of yarn if you'd like but I'm just going to put this one here. You're going to go ahead and you're going to join the same way that I showed you before, where you're going to take the two strands right here, the tail and the working yarn, and you're going to knit that. 
And when you knit it, remember that this is definitely not two stitches. It is one. So when you get past the stitch marker to do that, just go in both strands and knit as one. For this pattern, we're going to knit one, purl one. Okay, so we're going to find the working yarn and we're going to bring it to the front because we're going to be purling. So this is just a knit one, purl one all the way around. And so just go ahead and knit one, purl one all the way to the marker. And then okay, so I've gotten back around and you're going to end with a purl and then you're going to start with a knit. So this is going to be your second round. Let me put that down. Let me scoot that down. And then you're going to go under both of these stitches. So don't forget when you're on the second round that you're going to knit both of these and make sure you have your working yarn, not the tail, and yarn over and pull through. And then you can snug this down a little bit. So that will be your knit. And then for your next one, you're going to con just continue. You're going to purl the purls and knit the knits, okay? So when you are working in the round, that's what you're going to see. Knit the knits, purl the purls. You're making a little rib type stitch. If for some reason you have to take it out to unknit something, this is how you do it. So you go into the space where you have here where your yarn is coming out and you put that one through, slide that one back out and then just bring your yarn back around. Go into the place where the yarn is coming out, go back around. For a purl stitch, you do the same thing. Go in here, just slide it out, and take it off. So a few times in my life, I've had to do this, and well, actually quite a few times, and so I thought I would share that with you because this is really important to know how to unknit something so you don't have to start all over. After you've knitted the amount of stitches you want for your collar, then this will start the increase row. The increase row is you're going to knit in the front and also knit in the back. So that's called a knit front and back or knit FB. And then you're going to knit two stitches, one, two, and then you're going to do a knit front and back again. So it's just knit in the front, don't slide it off then just knit in that back. And now you can slide it off. So you've made an increase right here. So again, it's knit two, one, two, knit front and back. And do that all the way around to your marker and then I'll show you the next step. And when you get to the last two stitches, you're just going to knit them because you did a knit front and back and you, you ended with the knit front and back and then you had two left over. So both of those will be knitted. Then after you do that, you should have 74 stitches. And so you need to go halfway and put a marker in right here at 37 stitches. So once you've gotten your markers in and you're going to start this next row, you're going to slip your marker and then you're going to do two rows of knit all the way around one two and then once you get around there then I'll show you the next round when you're coming up on your marker this is the halfway point of your marker then you're going to slip the marker so we're just doing those two rounds of knitting and so you just want to slip this so just kind of ignore it but keep it there and just keep going with your two rounds this increase row right in here, let me just turn this upside down. So I just wanted to share with you real quick too. So we're after you've knitted your initial collar, then you're going to do an increase row. That increase row on the main body is considered round one. Then right here we have two rows of knit stitches, one, two. And then on the next round, that's our increase row for the center section where you see all the design going down the front. So that would be considered row four. And then row five will be where we're knitting all the way around. 
So I just wanted to clarify that for you. So any collar that you choose is a separate count. And then the main body will remain the same for any collar that you choose. Okay, so I've reached the end of my two rounds where I've knitted those two rows. And then we're going to slip the marker. And this is at the back of the neck because here's the tail. And you're just going to knit all the way to the next marker. Okay, so right here is your marker at the center front. And then just stop when you get to the two stitches before your marker. So go ahead and knit all of those until you reach two stitches before your marker. Just as a reminder, if you're making the larger sizes, you're going to have more stitches on each side than what I have. So I just wanted to remind you that of that. So make sure you look at the pattern so you can follow along with that. This is where we are starting. So we're starting this increase right here. So this stitch work is what we're going to be putting on the front and the back in the V section of the poncho. So this is your beginning and this is your front, front center. So this is where the point is going to be eventually at the bottom, but it starts right here. And so you're going to stop at these two stitches. And what you're going to do is you're going to knit these two stitches in the front. You're going to yarn over. You're going to just like take your yarn and yarn over. Then you're going to knit back into the front. Just like that. And then you're going to slide it off. Okay, wait. So, and make sure that these aren't really loose. You don't want them too loose and baggy. But you can just slide it off. So you have three stitches all together like that. Then you're going to slip your marker. And then in these two, because you have to make it even on either side, you're going to do a little bit different stitch. But it's the same stitch, but you have to go into the back. So you're going to go into the back and grab two stitches. So I'm just kind of bringing those to the front and slipping to the back. Okay. Again, it looks like you're going to purl, but you're not. You're just going to slip it to the back and you're going to knit in the back the two, two strands right there, two, two stitches. Then you're going to do what you did before. You're going to take it and you're going to yarn over and bring it back to the front. And then you're going to go back into the back, yarn over and pull it through. So see, you have these three on like you did over here and you just slip it off. So just let me show that to you. So here it is with your beginning hole right here in the center. And then what you're going to do after you've done that, then you're going to knit all the way to back to the beginning where your tail is right here to this next marker. So go ahead and knit all the way around until you get back there. Okay, so I'm at the back of the neck and then you're going to do the same thing that you did here at the front center, you're going to do this at the back. So you're going to knit the two stitches together, yarn over, and knit in the front. Slide off. Slip your marker. And then take these two, go into the back. So it looks like you're going to purl because you're just kind of loosening these stitches up a little bit and just slip it to the back. Knit in, oops, I caught a thread. Okay, so you're going to knit into the back. I have that extra little piece right there that annoys me, but I'm just going to keep going. And then I'm going to yarn over and I'm going to knit in the back again. I have those three stitches where I'm increasing. Slide it off. So on this next row, so this is your beginning, we're going to just knit all the way around for the entire row. So we want to knit until we get back here to this section. I just wanted to share with you how, if you make a mistake, to how to take it out. So what you're going to do is if you need to take these out, like I need to go back to this marker because I made a mistake in this section. 
So I'm going to unknit all of this. So I just wanted to show you how to do that so you don't have to unravel everything. So you're just going to find, let's see if you can see this little hole where the where the yarn comes out and you're just going to put your needle right in there let go with the other needle and pull it out and take it to the back put it in there push it out take it off this is so much easier than having to take out your work and start all over or go ahead and try to put your needles back into the stitches that fell off this is just so much easier. So over the years, I've learned how to do this, and I thought I would share that with you if you're a new knitter. And if you're not, then you have your own way to do it. And I just wanted to share this with you because that's what I did. So let me go ahead and get back to this section. Okay, so this is the stitch that I did in the center where we're making an increase. And see where this is coming out? You just go in there best you can and get those two stitches whoops let's go in there this is where I made the mistake so I have to go back in here and get this out so I'm gonna put my needle in there I'm gonna pull this one out and then I'll just unwind it as I see it happening so Right here, this is attached to the back one, so I can just pull that out, and there I have my two stitches. Then I slip my marker back over, and I have one more here that I have to take out, and that's where we had two stitches that we knitted together. So you have to make sure you go under and get both of those stitches, and you can push the back one out, pull out the yarn. I know it looks a little awkward because it is, and then this one right here was the yarn over so i'm just going to pull that out and there i can start all over again from a clean slate so i hope that helped you if you do make a mistake on how to take it out so i have reached the center marker where i just did my increases this is the front one and you can always tell when you need to do your um, knit stitches because this will have a bunch of little this will be bunched up in threes. So you have that one in threes and that one in threes. So you know that this is going to be a knit stitch round, not an increase round. Okay. So that should be a clue for you on how to recognize when to knit around and when to increase. So there I just knitted. Then I'm slipping my marker. And then I'm knitting these three because see how tight they are? We know we need to separate those and knit them. So one, two, three. And then let me just show you. So this is what it looks like so far. And what you need to do is just go ahead and knit all the way up until you get to the back of the neck. And then you'll see these three stitches that are bundled together like those, and you know you need to knit those. So go ahead and knit all of these, and once you get there, then I'll show you how to continue. So I've reached the back of the neck, and again, here's those three that are bundled together. So I know I need to knit all of these. Then you're going to slip your marker. And you're still going to knit these three because they are part of that center area. Oh, that's where that thread was. Okay, let's see if we can get rid of that. Two, three. Still tighten there. And then, as you can tell, this is that center area for the back. And then you're going to knit all the way to your next marker. You'll just be repeating rounds four and five alternately. So round four is the increase row. So as we come back here, we'll see that all three of these are all the ones that we just knitted. And so now we're going to stop two stitches before, and then we're going to repeat that increase right here with those two stitches. And then on this side, we're going to do you know, the same increase that we did before. 
So in these four stitches, those are the increases for this round. And then the next round will be all knit. And then again, you're going to, which is round five, and then round four, round five, round four, round five. And you just keep doing that until you have the desired length that you want. And when you're doing the color block, just make note that, you know, depends on where you want to change your yarn. Um, I will show you a few examples of what I'm going to do with mine. So continue knitting. And I hope you're enjoying this. I hope I'm not making it too complicated. Don't forget to leave me some comments. Let me know what you're thinking. If you have any questions, I would love to answer them. Just email me at sparkly160 at gmail.com. From when we start our eyelet stitch at the top here to the bottom, it's about nine inches on my body. And so I'm going to show you this picture here where I have this poncho on. And I feel like it should have been a little bit shorter where the white and the gray join. So I personally think that seven inches would have been good for me, maybe even six inches. So as you're making your pattern, just keep that in mind so you have options. At this point in my project, I'm going to need to change my cable. I actually need to make it longer. So you'll see this kit in my Amazon uh, store. So if you want this kit, this is a great kit to have. Okay, so I'm going to be adding to my cable because it's still it's you know a long cable, which is great. And I'm going to be adding more length to it. And so I'm going to screw this on here. And then there is a little tool here. I put these little keys on the stitch marker so I don't lose them. I think how you do this is you put one in here and one in here. Well, you use the tension and you just tighten it. You push one forward and one backward and that tightens it really nice. And the same here where it is the joint, the seam right there. You just kind of use both of them to tighten it. Then what you do is you take your end with your needle and you put that back on, just like that. And you can take the key or whatever that's called and you just tighten it up like that. So you get this tension right here and it helps to tighten it at the joint. Okay, so we're good to go. So now I have this long cable that I get to um, take up the slack on. So I'm going to push it all back on here. You just kind of slide your work down like this and it makes it really convenient to be able to try this on too. So let me go ahead and continue this around. So now I've taken up all of the slack and now it is a lot bigger. So this is such a great kit to have because you can continue making this bigger and bigger. And if you have a bigger size than what I'm showing you, then you're going to have no problem at all being, uh, you know, having it comfortable on your, your needles. And then every once in a while, I want you to check because see how this is coming apart? I need to get my little key out and I need to tighten that up again because they do come a little bit loose at times as you're, uh, working around your, your project. I just added the extra cable at the bottom so I'm able to try it on and show you what the collar looks like. So this is the one inch collar and once I block it, it's going to look so much better and be a little more comfortable. But here is what it looks like right now and I just wanted to share that with you. So if you have any questions, just feel free to email me at sparkly160 at gmail.com and let's get on with the video. So when you're adding your new color, I just want to make sure that you know you need to carry a, the old color at the back of it just for a stitch or two. So you're going to add your new color just like you normally would. And then when you go into the second one, you want to drop the new color, bring the old one to the top and kind of lay it to the front. And then you can use the new color again. And then you're just going to continue using that new color. Okay, so let me just show you what that looks like on the back. 
because it helps it to keep it in place right here. Do you see that? And then you can tie these together if you like, just to keep them, you know, so they don't come apart, just like that. And then that's what it will look like. And then you just continue all the way around with your new color. And then once you get back to this area right here, I'll show you how to continue with a jogless change. Also, just to let you know, it took me about 12 minutes to get around at this point. And so it's, you know, a fairly quick project. And this is at the very bottom. And I'm going to probably be adding about two inches with this skein right here. That's what I'm thinking anyway. So once you've reached the beginning where your color change was, then you're going to just knit the stitches just like normal until that last one right there. Then all you're gonna do is you're gonna pick up this front leg right here and you're gonna slip it onto the left needle. And then of course your yarn right here is on the back where you changed. And then you're gonna knit these two stitches together. Yarn over and that's your color change. So you can tighten these down a little bit and then you're just gonna continue knitting with the new color. And let's see, we'll give you a few stitches right here so we can show you. And right here, so that is the color change. If you kept going in a spiral around and around, this section right here, this transition would look a lot more pronounced. So this makes it a little less noticeable. And of course, when you're all finished, you're gonna weave in these ends and make them all nice and tight so you won't be able to really notice at all. So I'm just gonna back up here because I wanna show you what it would look like if you didn't do the jogless change, okay? Let's see, go back here. So this would be the last one that you knit. And then if you continued without doing the jogless one, let me show you what that would look like. Okay, let's see. Okay, do you see this? It's a much more dramatic step down. So as you can see, it goes all the way like here straight, like you can see these stitches, but then all of a sudden it just jumps down here. So again, let me go back to the jogless. Okay, so we're back at the beginning. And we're gonna lift, we're gonna lift this strand from the stitch below, knit these two together. And then I'm gonna do a couple stitches. And as you can see, it's not quite as dramatic. Also, when we get to the bottom, um, you just have to make sure that you have enough yarn uh, to do the, the bind off, okay? So here, I'm probably gonna have about two to three inches of a band around the bottom of my poncho. And then I'm going to leave enough yarn here so that I could do the bind off. And, for the bind off, uh, for the bind off, you're going to need an, an extra needle. So your bind off can be a size larger if you want, or a size smaller. It's just going to be somewhere close to the original needle. So this is a size 11, and this is an 11. So I just took that from my stash, and then when I do my bind off, this you're only going to be using a small portion of this because you're going to cast off two stitches at a time. And then as you cast off, it's going to just let go of all the other stitches. So you'll see when I get around to the end how I'm going to do that. But I just wanted, I wanted to share with you in advance that you're going to need an extra needle to do the bind off, okay? So if these are a size 11, you want this to be a size 11, or you can have 12 or a nine, or you can have a size bigger or smaller to do the bind off. So use what you have. You don't have to buy an extra one, but if you have another needle the same size, that would be ideal. 
So I'm coming to the very end, and this in my left hand right here with the needles is the very tip of the point of the design. So the tail up here is where we started. So that is the back of the poncho. Now if you just follow this down right here, so we finish where we started, okay? This was where we started. This is at the back of the poncho. And all you're gonna do is you're gonna end with the last row being a knit row. As you recall, there's an increase row and a knit row. So right here we increased, we went all the way around, and now we're coming back up to do the knit row. So you're just gonna go through this knit row right here past the marker, okay? So this is the very last time we have to do this. So we're gonna just slip that there. We're going to knit right through. So one, two, three. And I'm just gonna knit like two more stitches. So one, two, so you can knit, you know, a couple more if you'd like. Um, but what we're gonna do now is we're going to cast off. Now to cast off, you cannot use this needle. You have to have an extra needle. So I'm gonna take another needle, and this is the size 11, which is the same size as my needle here. Or you can have a bigger size, you know, one size bigger or one size smaller. It doesn't really matter. It just needs to be somewhere close to the original needle. The circular needle, it will go back onto the circular needle, but we don't really want that. We just want it to um, cast off. So what I'm going to suggest is that you just let that one hang just like that. Then what you're going to do is you're going to knit two stitches in the back loop. Knit two together in the back loop. And then here you have to have it, you know, um, a little bit snug so you don't have a big separation between this stitch and that one. And then you're going to slip this one back onto that needle. Then you're going to continue doing that same stitch. So two in the back, light it off, put it back on, keep them kind of loose. You don't want them tight. Knit in the back, slide it off, put it back, and continue all the way around. Let me show you why you need the extra needle. Okay. The other thing that you can do instead of having an extra needle like I'm using is that you could take off this end of your interchangeable needle and then take one from your kit and just put a different one on here. Or you can even use the bigger one if you want. Put that on there and then Bring that little tip over there. And then you can continue. Where is the beginning? Let me, let me show you this. Then you can use this one to do your cast off. So, because all you need is a little piece of, a, of your needle. You don't need a big, long needle. So this is where I'm casting off, just to show you. And you're only gonna always have one stitch, that's it. So you can put that back on and just keep going so you don't have to provide another needle. Isn't that cool? Hopefully you have enough here to continue and going around this whole piece, one time casting off, and then we're gonna do a little edge of crochet. Now, if you decide that you want, I just wanted to stop here real quick, because if you decide that you want to leave the edge just like this, that's totally fine. Or at this point, before casting off, if you decide you wanna make a two row um, purl stitch all the way around, that's totally fine. Whatever you decide to do your border like is you up to you. So you can just cast off like this and leave it as is, or you can do what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do two rows of single crochet 
or again, you can do say two rows of purl stitches. So whatever you decide here is totally up to you, but this is the way that I'm gonna do it. So I just wanted to stop you before we get too far and you're thinking that you wanna do a border of say two purl rows. So whatever you decide is totally fine, but this is what I'm gonna be doing. Um, I think you guys are gonna love this. Go ahead and go all the way around to the beginning with whatever stitch you decide. And as you can see, it starts to curl here, but I'm gonna show you how to block this when we're all finished. So I'm nearing the front section of the poncho where there's the stitch marker there. So what you're gonna do is you're going to just continue to cast off in the back loop. And then you can just remove that marker and then you're just gonna continue doing the same thing. You don't have to do anything special in that point at the end of this section right here. So just keep going. I'm halfway done, I'll be back shortly. I just have one more to bind off. I'm right here at the end. I'm going to go into this last one, pull off. And there it is, it's all bound off, ready to go. Okay, so all I'm gonna do here is I'm going to cut a piece at the end. I'm just gonna get your yarn needle with your last stitch. You're gonna come under here. So just do the best job you can to connect those. And then you're just gonna go ahead and you're gonna weave it in on the back. You're going to go through one of these U-shaped stitches. Those are your purl stitches. And you're gonna go through this, and then you're gonna go into the one right next to it, and then just pull up the yarn. Okay, so you have the smile, the frown, and you're going down into the smile. So this stitch right here will lay on top of that other frown right there, so you can't really see it, which is great. Then you're gonna go up through the one next to it because you came out the bottom. You're gonna go up here into these next two, so you have the frown and the smile, so I'm going back up through those. And then you're just gonna keep following that pattern so you can come, you can work your way back because you have this frown right here and the smile there. So you can go across this frown down into the smile. And it's just gonna lay right on top of that frown. And can you see that? So you're just gonna follow that pattern and then just continue to weave in your ends so that they don't stick out. And then when I get to the end of my um, my weaving in, then when I cut it, I'm gonna cut it just a little bit longer because once you stretch it out, it will hide underneath. So that's how you're gonna weave in your ends and don't pull them too tight. And that's it, and there's the other side. So it looks great, and I think that's a pretty easy way to weave in your ends. I'm just gonna single crochet around the edge. This is a six millimeter crochet hook, and I think it's also a size J maybe, I can't remember, but I'll put it in here on the screen. And then what you're gonna do, you have your leftover yarn, Hopefully you have enough, because one thing we don't wanna do is run out of yarn. <laughs> and this is where I left off. So I'm going to start here. And then you're just gonna add your yarn. And then I'm going to connect it with the short end, because I like doing that because it secures it. I'm going to chain one. So I'm gonna go around the entire area with my single crochet. I'm gonna weave in my tail as I go along. If you're not a crocheter, you know, you could learn how to do this with me, or you could just do the two rows of the uh, purl stitch. 
to make your border. So either way is fine. You're just going to go under the two strands and you're going to weave in that end as you go along. So make sure it's back there and then you're just going to yarn over, pull through two. You're going to go through those two strands on top right here. Let me show you when I mean two strands. So there's two and then that's the tail. And I'm just going to single crochet all the way around. You can do one row or two rows. It doesn't really matter. Just it's whatever you like. And I'm just going to go ahead and finish this entire edging. And then when I get back around to the beginning, I will show you how to join it. And then we will go ahead and do some blocking of this pattern. Oh yeah, and don't forget, don't do this very tight because you want it still loose because it's going to be able to stretch. So you don't want it so tight that it's not going to stretch, okay? So just make sure that you make it, you know, loose enough to have some stretch. And look at the pattern. That looks great, doesn't it? So you can add another row or just leave it like this, whatever you prefer. So when you're getting to the center of the point right here, what I want you to do is to make three single crochets in that top area right here where these holes are. Okay, so it just goes right into that top one at the point. One, two, three. And then again, you're just going to go around to the beginning. There it is. So I think that looks really nice. Again, you could add another row if you'd like, or you can do double crochet. You could do treble crochet, whatever your heart desires to do for your own personal style. Just go ahead and do it. It's super easy. And I hope you're having a great time doing this. The next step I'm going to show you is how to block it. Here's the collar. Look how pretty that is. Here's the edge. I think that looks great. So see how it curls when you do your blocking that will keep it from curling. So I think this looks great. I'm super excited. Let's check out the work here. I love the design. I laid it out on a table and this is what it looks like but there's the curly edge so this is why we need to block it so i'm going to show you how we're going to steam block this with an iron okay so i'm just laying my poncho out like this and i have a tea towel that i bought at walmart and it was like 99 cents so you can find whatever you can that is a protectant between your poncho and your um, iron. So all you're going to do, and it depends on the yarn that you use too, but this yarn that I'm using is actually very friendly to what I'm doing right now. So make sure that you read your instructions on your label to make sure that it's able to handle this. Or you can wash it and do your blocking as you know, as you normally do, whatever method you use. So this is the method that I'm going to use for this and I used it also on this black one right here which it turned out so perfect and it was really soft and just very nice. I loved it. So all I'm going to do is I'm just going to lightly mist it just like that with water and I have my iron and my iron is set on steam. So all you're going to do is Take your towel and I'm going to start here on the edge and you can, you're just going to make sure everything is lined up and underneath you can see the other pattern under there so you just kind of want to make sure that it's lined up and make sure that this area right here is pulled out. You want these to match so just lay them on top of each other and kind of push them down and let them lay on top of each other and the point. So just kind of unroll it. 
what you could probably do too is just go ahead and spray the inside just a little bit because it will help it will help uh, relax the fibers okay so I have that I'm just gonna lay this on top okay so I'm just gonna straighten that out put it like that put the cloth over it make sure it's rolled in the proper direction that it's laying flat and then you're just going to take your iron and you can steam it you just push the little steam button and I'm going to go up on this area right here where the design is down the middle and you don't want to hold it too long in one spot but just long enough to get it to penetrate the fabric And I'm doing this on a table, so I don't know if your ironing board would be big enough, because mine definitely is not. Okay, so let's see what happens here. Do you see? Oops, I forgot to lay that part down, but this is what it looks like. Look how great that is. So it doesn't curl anymore, but over here it does because that's not where I put the iron. And it looks great. Okay, so now I'm just going to move down here and you don't want to put a crease in the the arm so you might want to open it up like that and remember these will relax as time goes on so make sure that you do it properly and it makes it really soft. And if you see any curly edges, just go back over them. The nice thing about doing it this way is it's actually dry, so you don't even have to wait for it to dry or, you know, pin it or anything. One thing I love about ponchos is that they are kind of like multifunctional, so you can actually just take it and turn it sideways. Look how cute this looks. It just totally changed the look of this poncho. This would be perfect if you're going to a movie theater and you just want something kind of cozy and warm to show, throw over your shoulders while you recline in those seats. This is so cool, I love it. How cute does this one look? Oh my gosh, they're so adorable. I think I almost like it better this way. <laughs> and this one's just a little bit shorter than the other one, but I just, I love both of them. I think they're so pretty. So versatile. Oh my gosh, look at how cute. Thanks for joining me. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Please leave me a comment. Let me know if you're making this, if you have any questions. I can send you the free pattern. Just email me at sparkly160 at gmail.com and I respond to every email that I ever get. So I just want to let you know that I'm here for you if you have any problems. If you're a beginner, I want to encourage you to just keep going. I get emails all the time from people who are just telling me how wonderful the patterns are. Occasionally I'll get someone who had, is struggling a little bit and because they are a new knitter and I just try to walk them through it, encourage them to keep them going because I know that they're going to really enjoy the outcome. Okay. So anyway, um, I hope you have a blessed day and I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye.